Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Cauldrons of War, Eastern Front, 1941, Barbarossa and beyond. This is a turn-based grand strategy and war game uh, on the grandest of scales. It's a war game that looks at the Eastern Front in World War II, starting with the invasion of the Soviet Union and moving through the Soviet winter counteroffensive in early 1942. Now, we've played this a little bit on the channel before. This is a game made by, I think, like one dude, or it's a very small company. Uh, it's only five bucks on Steam, uh, so it's cheap, uh, you know, easy to pick up, uh, but very difficult for me to master. We're going to be playing as the Germans one last time on this channel, and I swear I'm going to do everything I can to eke out at least a minor German victory here in the invasion of Russia. It is very difficult. But um, I think I have some, some focus or some approach that, that might give us that opportunity. We're going to continue playing on normal because Lord knows I can't even win on normal. So why should I play hard? We're going to do Operation Barbarossa, the whole thing, from June to December of 41. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just launch. So this is Operation Barbarossa. It is the uh, biggest uh, invasion in, I think, history to this point. Um, you can see here the uh, objectives to give us points, take Moscow, three points, control the Baltic, three points, connect with the Finns on the Sphere River, one point, take Kiev and Kharkov, two points, take Odessa and Sevastop Sevastopol, two points, take Rostov, one point, and annihilate the Red Army, one point. Historically, the Germans win two points. I think they did the Kiev and Kharkov um, op, I think, maybe, I'm not 100% sure which ones they did historically. Uh, we need six to win the game. So basically, if we take Moscow, we'll win. That's very difficult to do. Um, if we take Leningrad and control the Baltic, um, well, we won't win with Moscow, but it'll get us halfway there. Uh, controlling the Baltic would give us three points. You know, the easier stuff, like, you know, connecting with the Finns on the Sphere River, uh, taking Kiev and Kharkov, uh, taking Rostov, annihilating the Red Army. So, like, what I've been able to do in the past is to get to the Sphere River, take Kiev and Kharkov, take Rostov. That's usually gotten me to four points, and I think I might have annihilated the Red Army in one of those and gotten to five. I've never gotten to six. So, we'll have to see how we can do that. Taking Moscow is really hard, um, but, but we'll see what we can do here. So let's go ahead and jump forward. Uh, first things first, uh, what do we do with the commissars? Uh, we can shoot them, and that increases barbarity, but gives our armies additional cohesion. Or we can treat them like other prisoners. I'm not going to take the steps to ratchet up the barbarity right away, so we'll just treat them as any other POWs. Um, okay, so with that being said, we're immediately to the front here. We're going to go down to the Romanian front first off, and we're going to switch over to the uh, offensive. We're going to switch to the breakthrough operations here. Uh, and then what we're going to do is the first things we're going to do is we're going to try and pin enemy forces. Well, actually, first thing first. Um, you know, I'm not going to bother with air superiority in the south because I rarely advance fast enough or quick enough to need it uh, in terms of, like, front supply to the front and I'm also not going to um, you know try to um, go too quickly so we've used one of our three command points to start the offensive we're going to use another one of our command points here probably to use some artillery here so I'm going to go ahead and shell the enemy here we'll pin their front army here by shelling the uh, uh, the front line unit, the enemy, what is it, Ninth Army. And we'll see if that pins them in place as we launch an infantry assault here. Well, we gained 5%. We destroyed the second cavalry unit. Uh, we didn't actually uh, surround or do anything to the art unit that we, we hit with artillery, uh, but we did destroy one enemy unit here and made 5% progress. So, uh, yeah, that's okay, I guess. That's the Romanian front. Pretty quick, pretty short, pretty sweet. Uh, we'll move up to the southern front, which is sort of the Kiev front here. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we are going to focus on air superiority first. So I am going to go ahead and launch uh, airfield strikes. That'll destroy eight enemy aircraft on the ground. Um, that's all we're going to do with the air attacks for now. I'm going to go ahead and this, it's still disputed, but I'm going to go ahead and do a blitzkrieg assault. Actually, no, let's do this. Let's. Someone was telling me that shelling is a good way to pin enemy troops in place. So if I shell here um, and then I go ahead and do a blitzkrieg assault... We wipe out the unit that was shelled and pinned. We gain 29% progress, uh, destroying two enemy infantry and impacting six enemy cohesion. Um, with that being said, the armor is isolated and has exposed flanks. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to, uh, I think we're going to do a defensive withdrawal. 
Uh, and then we'll go ahead and launch an immediate breakthrough operation to try and get some of that back. We get 12% back uh, and we damage the enemy units substantially again. So two artillery, one infantry, three cohesion. Although we don't destroy the enemy units, we do really badly beat up the 12th Soviet army and we make 36% progress on the first day. Army Group Center, uh, we're going to do some similar stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch an air superiority strike to get this into the Axis control. Three USSR planes lost, one Axis. Then we're going to go ahead and do a Blitzkrieg st a strike with a third Panzer Gruppen. You can see here we gain 28% progress. We encircle one of the enemy armies, and we inflict huge losses on them as well. Then we're going to use our other armored unit. We still have two uh, air air attacks left for this Blitzkrieg Assault. So we're going to go ahead and launch another Blitzkrieg Assault, and we're going to make 30% progress encircling another enemy unit here. Um, so both these units are exposed and isolated out front. Then we're going to go ahead and launch an Infantry Assault. We'll encircle another enemy unit and launch another Infantry Assault with the 4th Army. So we wiped out one enemy army, the 6th Cavalry uh, unit, and then we surrounded the 14th Mechanized Corps, 10th Army, and 3rd Armies, uh, and we also made 71% progress on the first day. Now, we did leave our armored units out here isolated with exposed flanks. That may come back to bite us in the next turn, but that's a pretty good amount of progress in Army Group Center toward Moscow, which is a key objective there. And then on the northern front here, what are we going to do here? We're going to go ahead and do air superiority again destroying three Soviet aircraft. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and launch a Blitzkrieg attack with our armored units. We're going to wipe out that border unit, the Baltic fortified regions, with that uh, attack. We'll go ahead and then launch a infantry assault. 14% more progress. We'll do another infantry assault. 9% more progress. And then we will do a deep raid. So 12% more progress. So these guys are stretched lines and exposed, but we did make 60% progress on our way toward our objectives uh, in Army Group North. That might have been a little bit overextending the flanks in the center and north, but we'll see if that works out for us and if it comes back to bite us as we move forward into the second week of the invasion of the USSR. So we've got the Liv Pogrom, as the Red Army of Axe Liv, the population discovers with horror the extent of the crimes perpetrated by the NKVD in the minds of the population and of the German troops who have just entered the city. There is no doubt that the Bolsheviks should be punished for these crimes. An angry crowd supervised by the nationalist Ukrainian militia and soon joined by the Einsatzgruppe in C is unleashed against the Jews of the city. The dead are counted in thousands and their number continues to grow as the Einz got Einz Einzgruppen take over. Okay, so that increases barbarity by one. We also get an auxiliary police unit available in Ukraine. We now have to sort of tr decide how we're going to treat uh, some of these partisans who are rising up and they're killing uh, their own people, the, the Jews of the population, the communist collaborators of the population. We have a couple of options here. We can let our Eins commando unit take over, basically just even kill the, the partisans. That would give us additional ammo and fuel for one of our German units, but it does increase barbarity by two. We can integrate the partisans into our army. We increase the barbarian by two, but we do get a free auxiliary unit. I'm not sure that matters all that much. Or we can disarm them uh, and uh, and restore order by violence. That doesn't increase barbarity, and it does give uh, our one of our German units extra fuel and ammo, although that unit also ends up being pinned. We'll do that. It is a risk. It could be our armored unit, but we will do that. Uh, the supply and the ammo could be useful. Meanwhile, uh, the 309th Police Battalion is apparently drunk and starting a pogrom of their own uh, against various peoples, and they are killing and, uh, you know, indiscriminately. So we can either, sh you know, quiet the fact that this is occurring, uh, which would decrease this police unit's quality, or we can restore discipline, uh, which will give a slightly less barbarity, but reduce the cohesion. So apparently the SD-102's quality goes down by one, and this one, the SD-102's cohesion goes down by one. The barbarian, it sounds like cohesion's a bigger penalty than the quality, so I'll, I'll take the, the cohesion hit for less barbarity. Because again, as the barbarity score goes up, the Soviet units will fight more, more stoutly for their positions. Not sure that really references any kind of real uh, reality in the, in the war, but it it's, is how the game's kind of treated. So we'll try to just cut the track. Uh, there's an option of having two operations where you move against Murmansk and try and cut the railroad line south from Murmansk, or you can just drive on the uh, the Murmansk uh, railroad and leave Murmansk sort of unoccupied. This helps interdict enemy lend-lease attack uh, or lend-lease impacts to the game. 
I've never succeeded in any of these operations. The North just feels completely futile from a gameplay perspective. But I think we'll try and concentrate our, our forces on cutting the track and see if maybe a more concentrated uh, single front in the North will give us uh, give us a, a better chance of success. Also, it'll give us one victory point if we manage to, to do that. Okay, so we've got the Norwegian, or we've got the Northern Front opened up now. So this is the uh, Operation Polarfus, which is the cutting of the railroad line from Murmansk. You can see we have three units in line. We also have two reserve units uh, in Norway as well. Um, first things first, I think, in Norway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the offensive. That'll use one of our command points. Um, and then I'm going to transfer these troops to the front. Not sure which one. They're both kind of weak units. They're one artillery, one infantry, but we'll switch one of them over. Um, be nice to have this extra Finnish core here, the second Finnish core up in the Norwegian HQ. So we'll do that as well. So I'm switching one of my better Finnish units up north to support the drive against the railroads in Murmansk. Meanwhile, the Karelian army will switch over to the offensive and attempt to assault on the border there. They do succeed in destroying the Leningrad fortified regions uh, and gain 4% progress. So that's the extent of what's happening on the Finnish route. But this drive here north of Leningrad is actually very important because that's the drive toward the sphere uh, behind uh, Lake Lagoda. Uh, and if they get down here, then when the German Army Group North drives east past Leningrad and they link up, you get a, you get a victory point for that. So back down to the southern front, to the Romanian front, you can see here on this turn the USSR regained air superiority. Uh, they lost three aircraft to one German, but they gained air superiority. They also counterattacked against the third Romanian army. They lost two tank units and six cohesion. So I think what we'll do here is, do we want to try and shell them with anything? I'm not sure. Let's assault with the 11th army first. See what happens. We destroy one of the Soviet units, the 16th Mechanized Corps. Then we'll go ahead and, uh, well, we could just give them additional supplies. So actually, let's, well, we have two points. Here's the, the impact. The fact that the Soviets have air superiority means that if I try to airlift my troops more ammo, that's probably a bad idea. So I'll send trucks with ammo. So they do arrive. And then I'll go ahead and attack again. We don't really gain any progress in that second attack. We do in, impact two cohesion on the Soviet front, but we don't really gain anything else. Meanwhile, on the southern front, on the uh, front of Ki the Kiev front, you can see here the Soviets launched a bunch of counterattacks. None of them did any damage to us. None of our cohesion, none of our units were damaged. They did lose a total of, wow, uh, 12 tank units here. Am I doing the math right there? Four, four, and four? Yep. They also lost a whole bunch of cohesion across several of their units. Now, some of these units were already surrounded that were trying to break out, I guess. So let's see what happened here. The 8th, 4th, and 22nd mechanized corps for the Soviets all surrendered. They had all been surrounded. Looks like they brought in a bunch of reinforcements, though, or at least they still have a bunch of units here. Uh, meanwhile, I am going to go ahead and do an air superiority strike. So we inflict two USSR casualties against one of our own to switch this back over to, to, to disputed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Defensive withdraw these guys. So they pull back. We'll do an airlift despite the fact that the air is still is still disputed. We lost three aircraft flying supplies in, so that's that's a that's a costly result. We'll go ahead and launch another breakthrough assault. We gain twenty one percent progress and we wipe out the Soviet twenty six army. And then we'll do a defensive withdrawal again. Or should we launch an attack with one of our armies? These guys seem to be the strongest. So the 6th Army will launch an attack, and they'll surround the 9th Soviet Mechanized Corps. So we don't gain a ton of progress, but we wipe out one army, we surround another. And then in the central group, a bunch of counterattacks again. They don't really gain any progress there. Air superiority switches back over to disputed. My armored units are still... Sort of out front, if you will. Let's do a defensive withdrawal. What do they need? They need ammo. And then we'll do a Blitzkrieg attack. So we make 25 progress. 
surround a couple of Soviet units. We have two command points left. I'm going to launch a... Do we want to do a deep raid? Can we even do a deep raid? Doesn't look like we have that as an option. What if I launch an attack with my infantry? Can they get there? No, they do surround another enemy unit. So we surround the entire front. So I use the rest of my points. We're at 97% progress, and the entire Soviet front line is surrounded now. The 4th Army, the NKVD Border Guards, the Western District Fortresses, 20th Mechanized Corps, and 11th Mechanized Corps. So their entire northern or, or central army group is surrounded, so we should be able to easily take Minsk next turn. Meanwhile, more counterattacks in Army Group North. They switch over the air superiority to dispute it again. We'll go ahead and try and get it back. We gained air superiority now. We'll also launch a Blitzkrieg assault with Panzer Group in four. No progress gained there. Wow. The 18th Army is pinned. Um, can't really do anything else with these guys. I guess, are there any units in Army Group North that we can send forward as reserves with our one remaining point? We could send forward the 23rd Corps. The Security Corps is a good amount of infantry, no artillery. We'll send the 23rd Corps forward into the Baltic Offensive. So not a great turn there. Meanwhile, in Finland, we've already used our points up there. So we'll move forward to turn number three. What to do with our prisoners? We can feed them. It costs us uh, points this turn. Also costs us supply. Um, we can also basically kill them or starve them. I don't want to use up my lose my command points at this point, especially in Army Group Center where we just had a big victory last turn surrounding the entire enemy force. So I hate to do it. It's it's cruel. It's definitely a war crime. It's not something you should do, but. Uh, I need to maintain that uh, momentum in the center. That's that's one of the areas we're having some of our most success. So you can see, actually, it even moved us forward here in Army Group Center. The enemy tried to counterattack, and they got no progress. Their other three units are all surrounded. It gave us 100% progress, I guess, because they had no more units at the end of the turn. Um, so, I, you know, we can, we can choose to go back into another Kessel operation and try and uh, surround the enemy with our two armored units. We can do Kessels because... Our units have, uh, have we have two armored units. That's what allows you to do Kessels. I'm not going to attack with my, my armor here, though. I'm going to attack with my infantry, primarily because I'm not, I'm not sure what would a Blitzkrieg Assault do. I guess we could test one, see how far we get. Yeah, I mean, it, it essentially, it's cleaning up operations of these Soviet troops that are surrounded. So I'd rather my infantry do that. although I did end up ordering it anyway. So we end up wiping out the entire enemy force in Army Group Center, and we're up to 58% progress on the road to Smolensk. So Army Group Center's doing well, making a deep drive into, into Soviet territory. More Soviet counterattacks in Army Group North. We still have air superiority here, so we'll go with a Blitzkrieg assault with our armor. We only gain 5% progress. We surround the enemy, but 5% progress, and that's it. Hmm. Let's move these guys to the front. So we destroyed one enemy unit, surrounded another, but we're still, we're kind of getting stuck here in Army Group North. We're not making enough progress quickly enough. More counterattacks on the Kiev front, more enemy units destroyed here. 19th, 9th, and 15th Mechanized Corps all surrender. So these guys pulled back. Mostly launching infantry assaults here in the center. I'm going to allow my armored units to rest for a turn uh, and then hopefully draw supply next turn from the railroad line. There's four out of four, so we should be able to bring supply forward for these guys so we can launch a Blitzkrieg assault and finish off Army Group South 
Meanwhile, we did also destroy the 5th Cavalry and, and did some substantial damage to the other, the other units with our infantry. On the Romanian front, we assault twice with the 11th Army, which is actually a German army, but it doesn't really tell you that. Um, and we destroy the Soviet 2nd Mechanized Corps. Then we assault with the 3rd Romanian Army, and we do some damage to the uh, ninth Soviet Army, although we don't destroy it. We're about halfway through progress there. It is early July at the moment. Our drive in sort of northern Finland here, or I guess central Finland, continues. We destroy the seventh army, and so we'll progress twice here toward the front, 32% here in central, central Finland. Go to the front with these guys. Do some cohesion damage there. We need to make more progress in Norway. All right. So cohesion of the German armies is increased by one or lost by one. Tiredness of German armies increases by one. Army Group North, we're moving through hot weather. Continued Soviet counterattacks are failing and not gaining any progress. There's only one Soviet army left. The 27th Army is the only one left on this front. We'll launch a blitzkrieg attack with Panzer Group in four. And it looks like we wiped him out. Or we didn't wipe him out, but it was close. So go ahead and do an assault. Now they're wiped out. And so then we'll progress. So you can see here we successfully completed that operation now in Army Group North. And we can either drive on Talinen, on the Talinen Road, or we can drive on the Luga Road toward, um, toward uh, Leningrad. We have two points left, so we will basically make some progress if we, if we move now. So with that being said... We'll go ahead and make 13% progress against no occupation or no opposition on the way to Leningrad there. The troops northeast of Leningrad, meanwhile, continue to progress against no enemy resistance. Soviet counterattacks in the north in Norway don't go anywhere. Okay, so progress there. Let's keep an eye on Army Group South. More Soviet counterattacks. We did lose some infantry in the 6th Army to some Soviet counterattacks. We're starting to get some purchase with those counterattacks. Let's do air... Oh, I don't have air superiority as an option. I guess I don't have enough fighters, so we'll just do a blitz attack. 25% progress here. Wiping out the 6th Soviet Army. So good progress there. That withdrawal by that armored unit seems to have been to paid off. Okay. So two points left. If we do feel they're isolated and they have exposed flanks, we destroyed the 6th and 5th armies this turn. The 12th Army and the 24th Mechanized Army still remain. Um, can try and send a fuel convoy forward for the armor and then keep pushing them forward. Or I can do a defensive withdrawal and set us up for success next turn. Both my other units are too tired to advance. Is there anybody in Army Group South that we can push forward some reserves? We've got the Hungarian Fast Corps, which is some Hungarian armor. We've got the Security Corps, uh, an SS Police Corps, 25th Division, 16th Division. I don't really like any of those units right now.
We'll do a fuel convoy. We lose eight trucks, which could be a problem. We'll do a deep raid and we'll get there. Okay. So we successfully moved forward here in, in the Southern Army group now. The next battle is the capture of Kiev. Our units are strung out. We are going to run into some. We still have two Soviet units here in our front, the 24th Mechanized and the 12th Armor. The 1st Panzer Group is exposed with stretched lines and exposed flanks, so we probably won't make not much progress next turn, but I did finish up that first strike in the south. Uh, meanwhile, in the Romanian front, yikes, the 3rd Romanian Army was destroyed or split into two subset subunits by Soviet counterattack. Uh, let's move these guys into rest and we'll refit them. The 4th Romanian Corps is surrounded. Meanwhile, we'll counterattack with the 2nd Romanian Corps against the 18th Soviet Army, and they do manage to surround the 18th Soviet Army. Meanwhile, the 4th Romanian Corps itself is surrounded. That was a pretty good attack there by the 2nd Romanian Corps, though. And then moving to Army Group Center. So 13th Army, 47th Corps, 13th Mechanized Corps, and 13th Army are all headed to the front against us. Our own units are a little bit overextended, so we'll do some defensive withdrawals for our armored units. We'll do air superiority to gain air superiority, and then I'm going to do an airlift to both of these units here, if I can. doesn't look like I can. So I guess we won't do that for them. We'll just give them we'll just give them ammo. So we lose a few trucks. But we'll start the attack in the center tomorrow. We're already 50% progress toward the road to Smolensk. But we'll we'll continue the next one on the next the next battle. All right, so we have a focus of either moving directly south for Army Group South or driving on Kiev. We have the choice. Directly south will allow us to move south and support the uh, Romanian troops on the southern front. Uh, but it will slow our drive on Kiev as opposed to moving directly toward Kiev. If we go directly south, we open up a new operation. That's what Hitler wants us to do. If we go to directly to Kiev, however, we'll, live, we'll lose two command points um, in Army Group South. I don't, I don't know what that's representing, you know, Hitler not being happy or something. I don't know. Um, so in that case, I guess we will go directly south to keep those points. And uh, barbarity is increasing and our troops continue to get more tired. Our logistics becomes a problem. It's increasingly becoming a problem. You can see the new operation here in the south. Um, looks like there's only one. Is this still the capture of Kiev? It is. And Kiev is unoccupied. So we just got Kiev. Well, that was easy. Kiev is ours. That moves us into the Battle of Kharkov. So we'll try to make progress there. 24% of the way to the Battle of Kharkov. I completely abandoned the drive south by these army groups in the Uman pocket. And uh, I'm probably overextending a very small force in army group south toward Kharkov. Meanwhile, looks like the 4th Romanian Corps, which was surrounded, surrendered. The 18th Soviet Army, which was also surrounded, surrendered. We'll move the 11th Army back to the front. Badly shoot up the 18th Soviet Mechanized Corps, gain quite a bit of progress there. Army Group Center, meanwhile, more Soviet troops are headed to the front now. You can see they're really bolstering their forces in the center. But we have air superiority, so I'm going to go ahead and launch Blitzkrieg assaults here in the north. 30% progress here. Another Blitzkrieg assault here. That didn't gain any progress. Okay. So we gained a pretty good amount of success in the Smolensk assault. We also did surround one of the Soviet units, uh, but we, we suffered a little bit of, uh, of a slog. The, the, the turn started strong and kind of 
it devolved. Our first Blitzkrieg assault broke through, our second one didn't. Uh, and, uh, and so I did a reverse front, which should bring us back to our own line so we can draw supply. A lot of times that'll surround enemy units, but it didn't seem to do that at all. Meanwhile, Army Group North, the Luga Road, the Soviets are bringing troops to the Luga Road. We'll gain air superiority. We'll bring some ammunition to these guys. Do a Blitzkrieg assault here. No progress. Man, my armored units are not, not having much success so far. We'll start moving on to Lenin to try and free that other unit up. Meanwhile, on the Finland front, we succeed driving east here. So the next drive will be toward the Sphere front, toward the Sphere river. Soviet Union reinforcements are coming in in the north. We've got two Finnish corps dug in up here in the north. I'm hoping that might be enough to allow me to, to have some success against the Soviet troops in the north up there. But that's going to do it for this turn. We'll do one more turn in today's video. So the taking of Kiev is a great victory. Cohesion of the armies in Army Group North, Center, and South increased by one. Giant explosion devastates the seat of the new in Kiev. All right, so there's a massacre plus five barbarity. That sucks. All right, so essentially the defense of Smolensk hardens as Army Group Center and South are still unable to connect. It is time to launch the Panzers full south beyond the River Soj. Uh, the maneuver would allow us to commit the Army Groups, rationalize our supply lines, and possibly trap Soviet armies in the Kiev region. The project infuriates Gerdarian, who would like to rush east, overflowing the Smolensk traffic jam by Bryansk. Such a push toward the east would not allow his panzers to assist the other armies, which are trying to cross the Dnieper River and the Sho in the direction of Gomel. So we can drive east. This operation is launched by the 2nd Panzer Army, progress by 33%. The Panzer Army is isolated and its flanks are threatened. The Axis infantry is blocked uh, in the front of Gomel, or directly south, in which case we lose two, two command points in the center this turn. I feel like the command points are absolutely vital, so I am going to go... South, the Second Panzer Corps is, army is stretched and its flanks are threatened. The Deneza route is opened and gains 33% progress, and two operations appear in Army Group Center. All right, so the Finnish are, are disappointing us. We haven't linked up with them yet, and I guess Hitler is taking away command points because he's being Hitler. All right, so we've got the assault on Gomal down here. Didn't really gain any progress, and 2nd Army lost casualties down there, so that was great. Uh, meanwhile, 2nd Panzer Group in here can try and break through. And then we still have our units in the north trying to deal with Smolensk with, with nowhere near enough force to do it now. So we'll do a defensive withdrawal here. I mean, we're already at 70%. I really should have just kept pressing on in the center rather than distracting my my effort. How are these guys? They're still in good shape. Uh, we'll do an airlift. We'll do a breakthrough operation. And then a deep raid. Well, that didn't quite work out the way I hoped. We damaged one of their armies, but we didn't gain anywhere near as much progress as I would have liked in the north. Meanwhile, Army Group South will continue progressing toward Kharkov, I think it is. Meanwhile, on the South, we'll try and end this operation here now. 48% progress with that, that drive. A deep raid, 24% more progress, so we're 72% toward the Ulm pocket. I don't know what control by the party means, but apparently the party took direct control over some of the Soviet units here. We finished off the 18th Mechanized Corps. The 9th Army is all that's left. The, the Romanians are just so slow. They're making some progress. We're almost out of that first objective there for them, but... Uh, we'll entrench these guys. I don't think they can advance on the sphere front. Uh, 
trying to make progress on the Finnish uh, Leningrad front. Meanwhile, on the Norwegian front, we do some damage to Soviet cohesion up there. That's going to do it, and we're going to move into August. The Italians are entering the dance. So we can send them to the Baltic. We get plus two planes in Army Group North. Cohesion fuel for the Italians, minus one. Or we can send them to Army Group South. We'll do Army Group South. It feels like we're really stretched out down there, so and that'll stick to plan. It'll it'll prevent too much in the way of problems, I think. All right, so we'll progress with these guys. All right, so the Army uh, finishes its operation down there. Meanwhile, all the Soviet troops in Gomel are surrounded, so we can probably save the attack here and wait for the Soviets to surrender. And then our armored units are moving east now toward Kharkov. I'm going to put these guys in reserve and have them refit so they can rest. I'm going to give these fuel supplies so they can advance. 26% progress. Airlift, give these guys more fuel and ammo as they drive on Kharkov. Oh shit, I forgot about this attack down here. There's no more Soviet troops there either. Looks like they surrendered. Okay. God damn it. No progress in the south on the Romanian front, really. Army Group Center is facing growing odds. Blitzkrieg assaults are doing nothing. Move these guys into reserve. Army Group North. Okay. This heart thing, I'm assuming, means they're tired. So we'll pull them back into reserve. Meanwhile, the Finnish Leningrad front will continue the infiltration and assaults there. So we wipe out one of the Soviet armies that's on the border of Leningrad in the north. I don't really think these guys can do anything on the sphere front for now. And then on Operation Polar Fuchs, the Soviets are sending reinforcements in. So I think these guys successfully infiltrated, and now they attacked, and they wiped out the Soviet 104th Division. So maybe we can wear them down in the north. And that's going to do it for this turn. So move forward one more turn here. Okay, guys. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here. We're about 38 minutes in, um, and we're all the way to August of 1941. We've had some quite a bit of success, actually, in the center of Russia uh, and, and in Army Group South uh, with the taking of Kiev and the drive on uh, Kharkov. Um, we'll also likely take or be driving on Odessa very shortly. Uh, and in the north, we are making progress toward Leningrad. So we are having quite a bit of progress, but there are places that we're starting to get stuck up on as well. And it's not clear to me how much more success uh, is realistic that we'll have, or if I'll be able to win a victory. Barbarity hasn't tripped the level 15, which I think is where things start to get a little bit more dicey with our dealing with the Soviets. Uh, but we're very close. We're at level 14. And uh, we'll see how things play out in our next video. I hope you guys are enjoying this look at this game, which I find absolutely fascinating and very different, which is why I keep coming back to it. It is a bit of a puzzle game, but it is also a really interesting, challenging one. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts down below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.